Hiya right there, I'm going to try some more printouts on this. I've just put some new, two new strips of blue painters tape on here. Now, on these I'm going to ask for an infill of zero percent. Yes, zero. So, I'm expecting it just to do the outer shells. I've lowered the temperature, because it was on 200 of the nozzle that is, to 190 to try and reduce stringing. It was on 200 the nozzle, now it'll be on 190. I've changed the retraction a bit to 150 millimeters per second and 2 millimeters, And I'm asking for 50 degree heat bed temperature. So those are the main settings I've changed. This will be a different model to what I did earlier but it will give us an idea of the stringing and that. I want to print this out pretty hollow because I want it to print quicker although when I say quicker I think it's going to take about three hours to do this something like that and I want to like try it for size and such like before printed out solid so that's why one reason I'm printing out hollow well the main reason speed it up and in a way to test it and see what a hollow print will actually be like okay I'm going to go on the controller just now and I'll ask it to well I'll stop the video just now and then I'll restart when it's starting to print okay so here's the controller, so it's set to 50 for the bed, now it's starting to actually go in for the print. I think Kuva said this was going to be about three and a half hours to do this print and that's hollow, that's set to zero infill. So the nozzle is 190, I'm printing PLA, and the heat bed is 50 degrees. All layers that is is 190, I'm not asking it to like lower the temperature as it goes on to the next layer. It's just set to 190 for everything on the nozzle. E3D version 6 nozzle, 0.4. Nozzle on there, print and PLA. It is 1.75 classed as this filament, going through bone tube, but I did measure it more nearer 1.70. Printing onto blue painter's tape here with a bed. I'll just reiterate that is set to 50 degrees. The only fan is really the one on the hot end to keep the hot end cool. one going up there. I am not asking for a raft on this print. There's a little bit of a like, sorry, a bit of a nose mess there. So I might want to increase the skirts on my prints. That's like an outside layer that does and you can set the distance I believe away from the print so it will get the filament flown in a good consistency if I can say that word before it actually starts printing. That's looking okay from what I can see. So 
So be speeding up this video. I will cut bits of this video out as well. We'll put this on like fast forward time lapse on this video in a few moments. So just let print out a bit more of this sort of first laving, which is your first laving is basically the most important. It does look like it's squishing okay to me. This is actually part of the feeding mechanism. I have done some design changes on a, somebody else's design and I'm hoping that this will like fit on the feeding mechanism that I'm trying to build. But because the feeding mechanism I'm trying to build does not have a quick release mechanism as part of it, but that's what these parts are for, there's like a lever there, that's sort of the plate that pushes against the filament, that one will have a bearing in, see the two slots, those are like for the two bolts that go in, this one is like a peg that goes in that round hole there, and the bolts actually go through that, and it sort of clips on, I'm hoping I'll be able to like lever this lever up, that's what that is. That will lift out these two slots, the two balls, and then be able to reasonably easily change a filament if I need to. That is the plan here, so I've modified the original STL file that was provided by somebody else, and put the slots in, change this shape of this because on my on the feeder it does have a like ball race so I've had to put a bit of a dent in there and pad it out on the other side okay so I know that's a bit you might not understand all that but I'll show you actually I can probably show you the original part I printed out just now so this is like the, in a way this is the original part and the plan is to modify the back plate that goes on here. This is like, well part of this print. Well basically, this sort of goes up there with those two slots, this lever. goes on this peg here which it is printed out that's what's on the left hand side here is this peg it actually goes on there and on my print see I'm having to print this much shorter this is for a much longer one well I modify the one that I have to have the slots in and then this will sort of almost come up like that these will be able to lift because there will be some more bigger slots in here I've done it, the design for this I've changed the design I have yet to print it lift that up and then this will sort of open up and then you can get in at the filament without having to unscrew all the screws all the time or much anyway so that's basically what I'm doing which way is this Oh, so on that side I think it's going that way up that's our part on the right hand side over there this is this middle part here so it has this ball like base in it has a peg okay and basically I've modified the design here to have two slots in there you might see them when it moves about so that these balls can slide up then this mm, oops, this will go on to there with that extra sort of cut out here that I've done for this ball base so that goes on that peg as I say and a couple of extra slots in the the top here hopefully these balls can lift high enough to like unclip this when I lift this lever so that's the basic idea I have changed 
the design of this a bit. I've made this flat plate here a bit thicker. I'm hoping if it works, I'm putting a dragon on here as well. Might as well. Got a nice flat area there, just to draw another dragon. I'm hoping that comes out. Right, I'll go into increasing the speed of this video. See, there's a like cut out for that bearing on that side there. Let's leave it. Right, I'll increase the speed of this video now because it's about three and a half hours altogether. I'll just do this bit. Nice to see the printer nozzle moving pretty fast sometimes. The video is back on its standard speed now. I want to try and show you the zero infill. See, basically it's almost like an outer shell, especially on this part here. Well, I mean, you can see it more on that part, I think. And that's fine, I hope. Because it'll save plastic, save time. Still getting some strings, I see. I see one there. I see a couple here. But my feeding mechanism, this is what I'm trying to do, actually build a better feeding mechanism. My feeding mechanism is very poor so even if I ask for retractions I don't know how well it's doing those retractions. I can heave it there, you might heave it so good. That's the cogwheels. See, I should probably do it just now. That sort of click, that's the actual cogwheels, they're pretty loose. So I don't think it's retracting very well on my feeding mechanism and I don't really want to touch the feeding mechanism at the moment because if it's working at all, it's working. That's the way I look at it. There's been a lot of problems with the feeding mechanism, well a lot of problems with this printer altogether. If you look at my early videos about this printer, you'll see the damage that it arrived in. Just move this camera a bit. You can certainly see the hollow there. So that's zero infill. It's basically just doing the outer shells in a way. Obviously you won't get the strength of the part if you do something like this, but it will save time, it will save plastic if you're just doing a sort of design thing that I'm doing now just to see how well it's going to come out. So it's about just over one hour into this print. I think it's about a three and a half hour print, something like that. It looks much further along. Actually, I might have that time wrong. I've got more time, Kuva said. I'm going to go back to time lapse, speeding up this video in a few more moments. Just wanted to show you, like, the zero info. Okay, back to normal speed on the video. It is 1 hour 25 minutes into this print. Just in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, I want to show you the actual 
feeding mechanism I'm using at the moment. Absolutely, pathetically terrible rubbish, junk, scrap. Just let this go around here a bit. So here's the feeding. Just let me move over a little bit so you can see the small gear now. And you can hear it is actually like going backwards a little bit there but I don't think it's really turning enough there's just too much play in this all it basically is see that white that's a white nail nut bolt screwing in there and that's pushing against a piece of plastic that pushes against the filament that presses on the hub bolt that's all there is to it see particularly when it goes backwards like retraction the whole cog gear is actually tilting rather than turning it backwards I think in sometimes so that would partly explain any stringing I'm getting I imagine to watch this a bit longer isn't that fascinating particularly at the moment when it's done quite a bit of I think retraction here so it feeds a bit and then it goes backwards to try and stop holes etc etc but it's like the whole big cogwheel there is I think tilting sort of moving over rather than turning if you get me sometimes anyway but that's one thing I'm trying to do now is get a new feeding mechanism printed out but obviously if your printer isn't working very well how can you print parts to fix it you know, it's like saying to somebody, or you can go on the internet for help about the internet that you can't get onto. All you have to do is get onto the internet and then you can get help. But you can't get onto that internet for help because your internet isn't working. You know, if your printer isn't working, then you can't print out any parts that you need for your printer. But, as you see, the printer is reasonably working this is my sheet of cardboard here which I have up to stop drafts let me move back around to the print now this tripod isn't very good that I would use for this Right, it's been some time, I've allowed it to cool, it's in 27 on the display for the heat pad bed, so that's okay, that's ambient temperature, now let's see how easy it is to get these off, see if they break up, because they are basically hollow, just shells, zero infill.
Let me move the camera angle a bit so we can see a bit better I think. Right, let's try this one. That is stuck on there quite well. Let's try this one because this one does have some like parts I can get a hold of. No, we're back to being stuck very firmly. Ooh, yeah, it did come off but that was a lot more difficult to get off than earlier on. It hasn't broken apart anyway. Remember this is hollow. I think we can see a bit of a gap there actually. Some like artifacts on the side. There's a blue painter's tape. Very lightweight because it is basically hollow. Let's try this one. No, can't get that. No, I can't really get a purchase on these. Let's try from that. That middle one was a struggle to get off, but it wasn't 100% as bad as before. This can damage the blue painter's tape. But that came off, that smaller piece there. Well, easily using that paint scraper thing there. Oh, I did pin one of these out before. That's the go in this like, hole there. But I had to file it down with a big rasp, well, file I have, flat file I have, just to get the fit. But it's okay. And let's try this one. Oops. Try with this. Oops. I'm try and get a different angle on that. What I don't like is like when you're leaving with this, if you're leaving like this, this these corners, although I have tried to round them a bit, do stick into the blue painter's tape sometimes. Can't get. Let's try from this direction. Ah, that's. It is pulling the blue painter's tape up a bit. Try now from this side because that's come off eventually. I mean that's not as bad as what was earlier on when I was doing these. Trying to get the focus. That is with a heated bed. I just could not really get them off. As you see, bit of a hole there. Pretty good. A few like artifacts. I'm going to call it artifacts rough, roughness. Basically this is to fit into this hole. It will not fit like this. It's almost fitting. As I say I'll have to send, well file this down. I'm running this on a big file like this. On the previous one I did. So basically this is going to go on like that. That's going to go on there. And as you lift this up with that peg, hopefully it will pull up the two bolts that sort of go through here. I'm not sure which way around that goes actually, whether the flat end goes that end or the flat end might go this end actually. Anyway, as you lift this up, that will unclip them, um, lift these two bolts up and that can then fold out and then you can get in at the filament easier. So it's a quick release mechanism for a filament feeder. Now I'm going to print the other part just now. I think that's a, the other part is five hours even if it's hollow, even if it's set to zero infill. I think what I'll also do is turn the temperature of the bed down from 50 to 45. 
goes away a little bit hard to come off. Yeah, it's pulled up a bit of the so here's the bed. A little bit came off there. Usually these like bits of skirt I can quite often get my fingernail or thumbnail under the edge and gradually pick at them and they will come off. You have to be careful because you might get bits of and it can be like it's only a bit like bamboo shoots under the fingernails. So there's a bed afterwards. And that was 1 hour 35 minutes the display says.